So coming to the next <clears throat> phagocyte uh, defect here. So if you see here, this is a phagolysosome. So as we discussed phagocytosis, the, uh, the bacterium is just engulfed inside its endocytose. Then there's a fusion of phagosome and lysosome. Then you have phagolysosome formation. So I have been talking about a very powerful system which is used to kill bacteria. This is the powerful system. This is called respiratory burst. So you have three enzymes here. Enzyme 1, 2 and 3. Can you name these enzymes from your path? This is NADPH oxidase. What is this? This is superoxide dismutase and this is myeloperoxidase. So what is happening here? Ultimately, you have a very powerful chemical here that is HOCl that is almost like a bleach in your surface disinfectant. Now, this is going to cause multiple pores in the bacteria and digest your bacteria. So if there is an enzyme which is deficient here, for example, in this particular disorder, there is this enzyme is deficient, NADPH oxidase. So this process is not happening and HOCl is not produced. Okay. Moreover, even if some amount of uh, this process is happening, this is diverted by special bacteria or special organisms which have catalase here. So catalase basically diverts this entire process and it avoids formation of HOCl so further contributing to the disease. So in this particular disorder, we are talking about chronic granulomatous disease. So imagine there's already a deficiency here. There's only, for example, there's only 10% functioning of this entire process. So even that 10% process is bypassed by this bacterial catalase, which is produced by the organism. So in this particular group, you have infections with bacterial organisms which produce catalase. So catalase producing organisms become your main infections in, in this particular disorder here because of defect in respiratory burst. So CGD, this defect in NADPH oxidase enzyme, as I said, it's a key enzyme in respiratory burst. The mutations, you don't have to remember all of these, but these are the common two mutations which happen in CGD. As I said, there's infection with catalase po positive organisms. There's a mnemonic for that. What is this? This no, it's called no space, no for nocardia, S for staph, A for aspergillus, P for pseudomonas, and E for E. coli. So these are the common, there are others as well, but these are the common catalyst producing organisms. So as I showed you that in the previous picture, if you have a catalyst positive organism, then that infection is going to flourish in this particular disorder. So you have catalyst positive organism infections more. And you also have granuloma formations in various organ systems like gastrointestinal system and urinary tracts as well. So this is about the same disease we are talking about. Uh, for example, this child had pneumonia, you had collected sputum and you have put special states and you see this appearance. What do you see this? What is, what do you observe here? You see a filamentous structure here. This is probably a fungus. So what fungus is this? You might have read this in your microbiology. So whenever you see a septate hyphae, which is acute angle, acute angle is less than 90 degrees. So it's always aspergillus. How do you remember this? A for A, acute angle aspergillus. So when you have obtuse angle, you have other organisms like mucor as well. But whenever remember acute organism, acute angle that is aspergillus. Uh, aspergillus again, as I said, the mnemonic it's a catalyst positive organism. So repeated infections of aspergillus, pneumonia, and CGD along with staph and others as well. So coming to the diagnosis in CGD, it's very important. It has been traditionally told that NBT is the diagnostic, diagnostic test in the gold standard test. But NBT basically stands for, if you're aware, nitro blue tetrazoleum test. It's nitro blue 
Fred Rizzolium. So what is this test? This is basically a subjective test wherein uh, the technician observes this test. If that particular sample has a phagocyte which normal with the normal NADPH oxidase enzyme that is going to take up the stain. So if the if the uh, if the uh, if the cells are positive, the stain positive, that means there is no disease. That means the enzyme is there. If, if the cells do not take up the stain, that means the probably the patient is having chronic granulomatous disease. Okay, that is a concept. But this test has been replaced because it has a lot of disadvantages. This is much superior test called dihydrorhodamine test. That is called DHR. And this is a gold standard test, which is easy to perform. There is no subjective errors. This is more reliable and more sensitive than NBT. So dihydrorhodamine test has taken over NBT. NBT is not the gold standard anymore. So obviously it can be confirmed with genetic testing. So when you screen for this and then go for genetic testing. And in very selected and severe cases, you can go for hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Okay, coming to the next group. It's a very important group here again. So I'll try to revise what happened in the innate system here. So there's a wound here which has happened. There's a cut here. Secondary to that, you have a lot of bacteria which have come here and causing abscess here. So the macrophages have tried fighting and then they have called leukocytes to come over to this side. So this is chemotaxis, this is diabetes. So as I said, the neutrophil is going here in a streamlined flow. And suddenly the call has come from the macrophage and then they'll start marginating. They'll come to the margins and then they'll adhere. And then they transmigrate. So that is called diabetes. So if there's a problem in the addition, so that is what is called leukocyte addition defect. So we're talking about leukocyte addition defects. Here there are three types again, leukocyte addition defect, one, two, and three, but we are not going to the details of that. LAD type one is the most common one, just remember that. LAD one is the most common one. So we have recurrent bacterial infections because the Neutrophils are not reaching the site. So wherever you have small uh, injury that fo that follows a severe bacterial infection, usually Staphylococcus. Second thing, a very important, very important uh, clinical clue. What is happening here? This chemotaxis it's calling neutrophils here because there is an infection. The bone marrow produces more and more neutrophils, but unfortunately the neutrophils are not able to go outside. So they accumulate in the bloodstream. So when you take a hemogram or a CBC of this patient, you see neutrophil counts very high. You see a count of 12,000 WBC count and that neutrophils of 90% consistently. You take the sample again after two or three days, the abscess is persisting. You see a count of 14,000 with neutrophils 92%. So whenever you see persistent neutrophilia, you must think with the background of skin infections, and a probable genetic inheritance and consanguinity and such. You must think it is LAD. You have persistent neutrophilia and absent pus formation. A very important finding again because what is pus? Pus is basically dead bacteria and dead neutrophils. So when there's no neutrophils going there, the bacteria are not gonna die and there are no neutrophils there. So there's an absent pus in this. And you also remember neutrophil also plays a very important role in acute inflammation which follows chronic inflammation which follows wound healing. So if there is a defective or a delayed inflammation which is happening, the wound healing is also going to be affected. So you have impaired wound healing here. Very important. The consequence of that is basically you have delayed separation of umbilical cord. So after birth when the umbilical cord is cut, so that is basically an injury. We are cutting the cord. So there is inflammation which is happening there. So it should be healed so that uh, there should be no uh, normal wound healing which should happen with the umbilical cord. So usually cord falls or the separation occurs by at the end of second week, less than 14 days that is. So if the, if the baby has separation at the 15th day, you usually do not call it delayed separation. It depends on the ethnicity and other factors. So usually the cutoff is taken more than 40 to 45 days. If the cord has not fallen off, but still healing beyond 40 to 45 days, then then you label that as delayed separation. 
a very important again question delayed separation is labeled when it's beyond 40 to 45 days then you must suspect that there's probable ongoing inflammation that is omphalitis then you must suspect that this baby could probably have an LAD so this is a probable first manifestation here before all these infections happen this could be the first clue that you know this baby could have an LAD and again LAD one is the most common one this was asked in the exam once as well so that is about LADs so coming to the next set of disorder here, what do you see here? You have a child who is one year old, female child. What are these lesions? This is cutaneous albinism. So we are dealing with immunodeficiency and albinism. Can you guess what this disease is? The hair is also blonde. So this is Chediak Higashi syndrome. So there are very few differential diagnoses for primary immunodeficiencies with albinism so that includes your chediak higashi syndrome just for information there are two more disorders which can cause immunodeficiency and albinism or silvery hair so that is grisili syndrome and another syndrome called hermansky putlak hermansky putlak syndrome so these are syndromes which have immunodeficiency and partial or complete albinism. So but technically uh, for this particular patient has Chidiyaki Gashi syndrome, we'll read about this in detail. So Chidiyaki Gashi syndrome is an autosomal recessive disease. There's defective gene that is CHS, that is Chidiyaki Gashi syndrome 1, a list gene. This has a major role in lysosomal trafficking, in neutrophils, platelets and melanocytes so all these are going to be affected so because neutrophils are affected okay there's def defective trafficking there's lysosomal form as i said you know once a bacteria comes inside there's phagolysosome fusion so that is defective here so that is the reason you have recurrent pyogenic infections and there's also defect in uh, melanocytes you have albinism because of that and there's also defect in neural cells as well that is the reason you have progressive cns malformations this is cns uh, manifestation sorry with coagulation defects as well because it affects platelets as well so as i said the phagolysosome fusion does not occur there's a defective fusion mechanism so you have large intranuclear intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies so this is very pathognomonic of chidiakashi syndrome this is pathognomonic joint cytoplasmic granules or intranuclear intracytoplasmic inclusions in both wbc's and platelets so that's why you need to get a CBC with hemogram, that is peripheral smear, to screen for this disorder whenever you suspect. So this is a peripheral smear. This is a neutrophil with large intracytoplasmic inclusion body. So this is a inclusion body. 